Hello, my name is Alex with ATEC Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be continuing and finishing up our view of the navigation on the left pane of a typical Jira software project. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and drop a like. And if you have any questions about anything we've covered today, make sure you drop a comment and I will we'll try to address it. Let's jump into the Jira and start talking about the navigation here. In the previous video, we covered the DP board or what a Kanban is. We talked about the roadmap, we talked about the Kanban boards, and we talked about the reports. Again, very high level. I'm going to have in-depth videos for all that in the future. But for now, I kind of just give you a, a very brief overview of what these things are. What we're going to be talking about today is the rest of these items here. So we got issues, components, code, releases, on-call, project pages, shortcuts, and not project settings because we actually have an entire video series just on project settings. Make sure you're subscribed because you're going to want to check out all of those things. So let's jump into issues. A lot of people typically ask me, a lot of my clients ask me, how do I know the issues that are in my projects when we divide them into different boards, right? Because the boards themselves are basically just filters, right? There, it's a filter that sets up criteria. And if an issue meets that specific criteria for that board, then it'll show up on that board. If not, then it doesn't show up. Typically teams that have multiple teams working on a one Jira project will run into this issue of like, uh oh, what happened to my issues? And so to kind of find your issues, right? If you just wanted to see holistically across the board, all the issues in this project, you would want to essentially just go to all issues or issues here on the left. And what you see here is a couple of different things. You can see all the issues, right? So you're just going to see them all regardless of their status. If it's an issue in this project, it's going to show it to you. You can see my open issues. This is going to be unique to you as the individual, and it's going to show you the issues that are assigned to you only. So you're not going to see all the issues, but you're going to see the relevant issues to yourself. And you can see that Jira is kind of highlighting a couple of items here to kind of highlight the specific query. Reported by me is the issues that you reported or created. And so the reporter in Jira is typically the creator of that issue. And depending on the permission scheme for that project, you can actually enable folks to be able to change the reporter. So if you're reporting it or creating an issue on behalf of somebody else, you can actually change that reporter. So it's the appropriate person, even though it's you creating the issue. When you do that, right, this will appropriately reflect here because this is going out to Jira and it's seeing the reporter field and it's bringing back the value there. So if you're the reporter, it's going to bring that ticket back. Open issues kind of starts ignoring that part and it's just going to go under the category of to do. And it's basically going to say any issue that's not in a done status, it's going to bring it back and show it to you. Done issues is the opposite, right? Done issues is going to ignore everything that's in progress or to do. And it's going to just present to you the items that are done. Recently viewed here or viewed recently, similar thing. It's just going to show you the items that you've been kind of snooping around, right? And so it's not nothing specifically. It's just kind of showing issues that you've visited very recently. Resolved issues is going to show across the project issues that within one week have been resolved. So every time that you move an issue from any status to done, what Jira is going to do is going to do a little check mark, slap it with the done, not shown here, at least not in a date view, but you will see at the very, very bottom, you'll see that resolved one second ago, not 11 seconds ago, right? So it actually timestamps your issue when you hit resolve, right? And so Jira is going to remember that. And so if you wanted to check and see issues who have that resolved date within the last week, you'll be able to see that by clicking on this resolve recently. And then updated recently is something similar, but you'll notice that there's a created, updated and resolved. And so on the updated, right? So this is anybody actually making a change to the tickets or to the issues, right? So any change when you do an update, right? So when you change the title, when you add the description or change the assignee, change the status, any of that, that is considered an update to the issue. And so that's going to record it, right? It's going to update this timestamp here. You'll notice that I created this issue 13 minutes ago, but I actually just updated it and resolved it coincidentally. But that's what you see here. Now, the last thing I'll talk about here is this view all filters. Now, this is powerful stuff because if you remember from the first video where we we're talking about the navigation across the top, you can actually save your searches. And when you save them, there'll be filters, right? So you'll be able to show the filters here. But in that last view, also be able to see all your filters that you've been saving. So this is like the second view or the second place to view your filters, right? They're going to show up in this view here. So that's that. Components. I haven't really talked too much about components, but components are super powerful. If you go back and look at the videos about when we went into project settings, 
we talked about components so i'll kind of defer to that video but just to reiterate for this one components is powerful and there's a couple of different ways to use the components field my personal recommendation is i use the components field in lieu of a label so a lot of teams like to bucketize and categorize their work a way of doing that is to use the label if you don't want to rely on labels which are error prone they can be fat fingered every label every character Jira will interpret it as a whole new label so if you don't want to worry about those things and you just want your team to have a reliable set of options that they can select and you're using a field that doesn't need a site administration to be configured and you want a field that is unique to your project right a lot of a lot of stipulations here then this is where you want to come and use the components so you can very easily as a project administrator come in and create an, uh, a component and then when your team is ready when they're creating hitting the create button they'll be able to select those components from the drop down right so again it's not error prone like a label is because labels are going to be you're going to create a lot of labels if you ever misspell them next up is code so again i have a video on this where we talk about it through the from the project management setting so i won't go into too much detail here i do plan as i stated in my last video i do plan on going in depth into like how to configure bitbucket how to connect to github and so if you are interested in those things again make sure you subscribe make sure you drop a like make sure you drop a comment and let me know that you're interested i'm going to make sure we make these videos here for you but this code one once you are connected to your source code repository whether that be big bucket or git hub or git lab or i'm not i think this is aws commit whatever one you're using right once you're connected to those providers you'll be able to kind of see your code base here releases didn't cover this in the project settings because i guess you don't do it over there but releases is a typical software term right to manage just different iterations of your software delivery and so depending on what if you're a software team or if you're just doing project management, right? There's so many different ways to interpret versioning or releases. And that's one thing I do want to explicitly state, right? Releases, as you see on the left here, and versioning or fixed versions or effects versions, or just versions in general, they mean the same thing in Jira. I don't know why Atlassian did it this way, but they thought it'd be a great idea to confuse the heck out of people. And so when you're talking releases, you're talking versions, right? And because on the ticket, on the Jira issue itself, you're going to see fixed version. And here in this in this navigation you can see releases and you're going to be like oh my gosh because the version kind of goes away the second you create the first version and so you kind of see releases and then you'll see versions elsewhere so uh, again just don't confuse yourself just know that they basically mean the same thing now back to what i was talking about before i went on that little tangent is your releases are kind of just unique to you right they're, they're unique to what you need what you what your specific use cases are and the way you run your projects i'll have a separate video okay, it's really starting to sound like a broken record but i'll have a separate video where i'll talk to you about like strategies behind releases and like how to use this field appropriately but depending on like the business case and the type of user that you are and the type of project you're managing but for a typical software project this is going to be like if you have an android or an iphone right you're, you'll have version 13.3.1 version 14.2.2 or something like that right this is where you would create those things to basically label and categorize your software going out in the kanban it actually plays an even greater role right because versions versioning or releases in in the kanban board are required so that you can actually clean out your kanban board because as you move things to done I'll just quickly switch over here as you move things to done and you want to get rid of these you're actually gonna have to click that release button and to get rid of them otherwise you're just gonna have a, a long long list of everything that you've done over the last week month or months right and so when you want to just wipe that slate clean uh, or want to release them on call is if you have Jira service management that kind of comes with ops genie which is this like scheduling tool which allows you to manage like on-call rotations for your services. Now, services, again, whole separate topic, won't really cover it here. I'm not really sure why they include it in here because usually the folks that are on-call are kind of managing that service management uh, queue. So unless you're like a user that's in both worlds, I don't really see you using uh, Ops Genie too much, but it's there if you want to just like add your team and put like a schedule maybe the application you're working on has to be up 24 7 and so if a bug ever comes into your project here you're going to want to know who's going to be able to fix it right and so you can create these schedules and kind of coordinate and organize your team a little bit more effectively project pages are a direct connection to confluence i don't think i have a confluence set up just yet 
All right, do demonstration space, right? So when you do that, you're connecting your Jira project to your space. And so now they, those two become linked. So any pages that you have in Confluence, you can very quickly start seeing them here and you can toggle between the two different applications just by going here. This is a really cool little neat feature. It's one of the newer features within Jira. And I think I really like it because I rely on Confluence quite a bit to document a lot of information. And then I use Jira to drive that the actual execution. And so I embed my Jira issues into my Confluence pages quite a bit. And so it's just really nice to be able to hop between the two and be able to see those things. Now shortcuts, which is the last thing I'll add here, right? Is like a, basically a URL, right? It's like a little bookmark, if you will. If you're consistently going to like a website that has like maybe your Git branching strategy, right? Or just important stuff that you wouldn't necessarily put in Confluence, but you should, or you just want to like, maybe it's a Confluence page and you just want to link directly to it. You can just kind of add as many as you want here and then just like little shortcuts so that your team can easily hop to those things. And I'll show you some examples in future in-depth videos. And the purpose of this one is to kind of just go over the navigation here and, and kind of walk you through that. And so, yeah, so the last thing here is the project settings. But again, I have an entire video series dedicated just to the project setting where I broke everything down. So if you haven't already, go check out that series. It's very, very powerful. This is pretty much the end of just navigations of Jira. At this point, what we're going to start doing in the future videos is we're going to go in depth into everything and really start showing you use cases of Jira, right? This was really just to kind of walk you through the different navigation, the different items. And in each of these subsequent videos, we're going to be going in a lot more detail into all these things. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, and if you have any questions about anything, right, drop a comment. If you need my help with anything, right, I am available for hire, right? I do this for a living. I'm Dr. Jira, <laughs> and I'd be more than happy to to engage with your company, with your business, right? And come in, train. I do trainings. I do configurations. I do pretty much everything, all Atlassian things. So if you have any questions about anything here, or if you just want some expert guidance, right? If you just want somebody to come and help you, maybe you have a budget, you just don't have time to do it, right? But you know that you, you have an urgency for your team to kind of get into Jira, or maybe you have Jira already and you just don't feel like you're doing it right, uh, feel free to reach out, right? Uh, my information is going to be in the description of this video and uh, you'll be able to find all my contact information so that we can uh, engage in, in some sort of um, partnership here. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.